Hi everyone, it's Terry from Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs. We are your kimono vendor and we typically see you every year in Kentia Hall. Now, unfortunately, we can't be with you in person this year, but this gives us an opportunity, working with Anime Expo Light, to bring you an inside look into a part of our collection that doesn't usually leave our showroom. You see, in our quest to learn as much as we can about kimono and bring educational materials to the United States, we've acquired a library of antique and historic kimono books. These books cover a range of topics, and we're going to be talking about one of those areas right now. That area is called Hinagatabon. Hinagatabon are kimono design books. They were sort of like the fashion magazines of the Edo period going into the Meiji period. These books detail amazing designs that are often hand-created by artisans so that customers could decide what kind of kimono they wanted to purchase. So let's take a look at some of the highlights of this collection. During the Edo period, people from the middle class were starting to be able to afford nicer and nicer kimono. So they would go to kimono salons in their towns or in their districts to order these kimonos. Now the kimono salons were provided with sample books from weaving houses and dyeing houses as a way to show customers the kind of pieces that they might be able to order. So these books are an example of the kind of sample books that you might have found in a kimono salon. This one to demonstrate color. And then this one is a textile sample book. This book shows samples of weaving done by a kimono weaving house. In this example, you can see a lot of very delicate designs that would have been done using a sophisticated loom and very knowledgeable weaving experts. What about the lower classes? What kind of kimono would they have worn? If they were comparatively poor, then they probably wouldn't have been able to afford to shop at a beautiful kimono salon. But they did have their own traditions for making kimono. The lower class people preserved some of the amazing textiles that they wove, passing down throughout the family patterns of stripes and plaids that could be used by successive generations who were weaving their own kimono for their families. These textile sample books are called shimacho. Shima means stripe. So these books would have contained all kinds of fabric samples that were hand woven by members of the family and passed down throughout the generations. These textiles are very fragile and they're attached somewhat delicately to each book. So this is one reason why these books don't really make it out of our office. You might notice that many of the textiles in these books contain a very deep, rich blue dye. This dye comes from the indigo plant. Indigo has long been cultivated in Japan because of a variety of properties. The color is really very nice. On top of that, indigo has some antibacterial properties. Mosquitoes don't like the smell of it. And when textiles that have been dyed with indigo are wet, they have some fire resistant properties. So firefighters in say Kyoto would often have jackets that were dyed with indigo that they would wet before they rushed into buildings to try to put fires out and to save people. One of the techniques that's used to dye kimono is stencil dyeing. It almost looks a little bit like screen printing does these days. These stencil dyes were very, very popular. They created a very detailed, refined look. Now, to recreate the look of the fabric within a sample book, sometimes fabrics weren't even used at all. Sometimes the stencils were created on paper and these papers were placed into these books in order to show the customer the detail of that stencil. This book from 1872 contains many very fine designs. You can see just how tiny the little dots are and how intricate the designs are. 
Among the many professionals that a kimono salon would partner with is of course a tailor or a seamstress to put the final kimono together. This three volume set is registered in the National Diet Library in Japan. It opens with a gorgeous woodblock print of women constructing kimono, and it goes from there to explain all of the different methods that are used to create kimono. This set contains illustrations and diagrams of kimono, diagrams about how to cut the pieces from the kimono bolts and put them together in the final product. It also discusses things like stitching techniques and ironing techniques that are needed in order to construct your kimono. The books that you've seen up till now are part of a process that a kimono salon has to use in order to be able to show a customer these, which are the actual hinagata bone. Just imagine being a customer in a salon and being presented with this amazing artwork, being able to decide that. I want to wear that. That is an expression of who I am and what I want to portray to the world. Not only are there hinagata bone for kimono, but there are also design books for obi as well. These particular books in our collection are actually hand painted. The backdrops are done with woodblock and then the details were filled in by an artist. As you can see, some of the obi designs are rather plain, but some of them are absolutely amazing. The subject matter for kimono and obi varies wildly. You could have anything from gorgeous flowers to coiled dragons to skulls and other macabre ideas. Hinagatabon were high fashion books and so their production value could get quite high as well. Sometimes the book started with a woodblock outline of a kimono and that outline was filled in by trained artisans using stencils and paints and dyes. Sometimes our hinagata bone come to us in great condition, but sometimes they've been through a lot. This book may look a little rough on the outside, but it was entirely hand painted and it is beautiful on the inside. A common feature of kimono in the Edo and Meiji periods, extending all the way to today, is the use of family crests on the back of kimono. Now, the family crests are detailed in books like these, which provide somewhat of an encyclopedia of different mon or kamon that could be dyed on the back of a kimono. We hope you enjoyed this inside look into some of the highlights of our antique book collection. If you want to learn more about kimono or if you want to acquire one of your own, please visit www.tangerinemountain.com or you can find us on social media on Facebook at Tangerine Mountain or on Instagram at Tangerine Kimono. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to everybody at Anime Expo Light and we hope to see you next year.